Don't you want to use 37 instead of 51? 37. Because it's 37 times Yeah, 51. but it doesn't matter which number you use. It's either one. You can double either 37 or 51. She's using 51 because you'll have to double less number of times. Okay. Do you, do you see that? You can use the to use the numbers on the right hand side to add up to it, and then that's how you. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It yeah, that is correct. That's what they're showing, but you can use either one. You can use 51, you can use 37. It's the same concept, though, right? We'll do it both ways so you can see it. Okay? All right, so 51 plus 51, which is 102, and that represents. You can see what I'm doing here, right? Can you see yeah. what I have here? Okay, so that's 51 times 2. If you remember what it's doing, then you will know what's happening. Okay, then you're doing what? Then you just double it again, so you do 102 plus 102. Oh, oops, I wrote 105, but it's 102. Yeah. Okay, and that would equal 204. And what does that represent? That's 51 times 4. Yes. Okay, next. What? And then 204 plus 204. Okay. Which is 408. And that and represents? 51 times 8. Yeah. Good. All right, keep going. And then the last one, 408 plus 408 um, equals 816. Okay, and, and that 16. represents what? Times 16. 16. Now, if you double this one, 16 plus 16 will give you what? 32? 32. Okay, so yeah. you can do one more time. So 816 plus 816. Okay, how much is that? Um, 1632. Alrighty. And that would represent times what? Uh, 32. 32. Okay, so now that you have that, we want 37, and 37 is going, oh, and then actually before you start, just 57 by itself would represent what? 51? Uh, 37 by itself? I mean, no, 51. 51. 51 by itself represents 51 that times. 51 times 1. All right. So we oh. have 37. So then you could do uh, 1632. So 37 you're splitting as what? 32. Right? That's the maximum it goes in. How yeah, many more yeah. to build up to 37 plus what? Uh, five more. So you could do 204 and then 51. Yeah. So, but when you or say whatever. 204, what number are you using yeah. here? Sorry, plus four. Four and plus one. one. So okay, that makes sense. So you're going to rewrite this as. And then you're taking that 37 and you're breaking it as 32 plus 4 plus 1. You should be able to write exactly what you did. Now what? That would be 1632 plus 4 times, so that'll be 204 and plus 51. And then you'll have your answer. Can you see that? Yeah, I was just I was just confused on how to add up to 37, but I didn't think about the one right. thing. Right. That's right. So yeah. when it's an odd number, you might need, because you're doubling, you're going to need okay. an odd number, which means you're going to have one somewhere. Okay. If they were both even numbers, then just these combinations will take care of it. Yeah. Yeah? Does that help? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Does everybody see that? Any questions on that? Uh, just raise your hand if you have questions. That way I'll know somebody has a question. Any questions on that? Is there anybody who wants me to pause so you can write it down?
or you got it. It will be in the recording also. But if you want to write it down right now, I can pause. All right. Okay, any other questions on 4.6? Can we talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the lattice method? Yes, that's a very good question you ask. So let's open. Is everybody okay doing lattice method? Is there anybody who wants me to show how to do lattice method? Let's ask that first. Raise your hand if you would like me to do another problem that shows how to multiply a number using lattice method. Let me, okay, oh, whole bunch of people. Okay, hold on. Oh. Okay, this will work. Okay, so when you, this is like one box, but I can't draw lines like that, so I'm just going to keep it like that for now, okay, just so you can see. But if you were yeah. to draw lines, you would draw lines that go diagonally like this. Can right. you see? Like that? Mm -hmm. All right, so 5 times 6 is how much? 30. 30. So the tens place will go there and the units place will go there. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. You will do the same. Uh, let's get more lines here and go like that. All right. So three times three will give you what? Nine. Nine. So actually, so tell me what to write in this bucket. Um, would you write a zero there? Yeah, and here? And a nine right there. Nine right there, good. Keep going. Five times four is? Twenty, so you'd write a two on the top one, and then a zero on the bottom yep. part. And again, let's draw a line. So that line will go like this. Mm -hmm. All right, keep going. So then you would draw, an, I don't know where the other line, oh, you wouldn't No, need it's to already draw here. Line. Yeah, it's already There'd here. Be a zero kind of below the two and then a six kind of below. Oh, no, but what about here, though? Three times four. Oh, shoot. There'd be a one below one. there then and then a two below the other one. Good. Okay. Now, this column here. <sighs> like that. Wait, can I have, ask a question really quick? Yep. Why was it, why did you multiply three times three? Yeah, three. that's what I was wondering. Oh, Isn't shoot. It? Three times six. <laughs> yeah, right. That's yes. what I thought it would be. So yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Because I was looking at this, but you have to look. I'm going to color this so we know what we're multiplying. You so know, you do go on the top row. Okay. Yeah, you want to multiply this and this. Gotcha. Okay. That way, it's very difficult to do it on the word here, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but, this is, oh, yeah. It's much nicer if you do it like paper pencil but okay keep going we now have five times two so there'd be a one on the top mm -hmm. and a zero on the bottom okay and then for the three times two there'd be a zero on the top and a six on the bottom yeah all right now you have to add do you see how i'm pointing to it but you <laughs> <laughs> you can see you can see the pointing but do you see the diagonal like this yes that's what you're going to add together so let's do this one here first so the bottom it'd be 8 plus 3 nope where's the 3 not the colored stuff just the white boxes diagonal oh, so just 8 then. so just 8 what about these okay so then that, will, would it be 2 plus 1 plus yeah. 0? Yes. So 3. So 3 
And then 3 plus 0 plus 1 plus 6. So 10. So, but when you have the 10, that 1 is actually going to be a carryover here. You okay. only write one digit, so let's do the carryover here. And I'll see how I can. So the 1 will actually go carry over here. OK, so then that. So let's make that red. Is that and then just added to the yep. 10 place? Yep, yep. For the next one? OK. So that, that 1 is the carryover. Gotcha. I don't know how that looks. <laughs> does that look like a carryover? Yes, yes. OK. All right, go ahead, add. So it would be 0 plus 0 plus 2, which is 2. So would it be 12? No, then? because you're carrying over. So you're adding 1 to it. So 2 and then? And the carryover 1, which will add up to? Th would it be 3? Yeah. Oh, I thought it would be. OK. All right. What sense. about this? That's just 1. So our answer comes from, oh, why is it not letting me? Let's just go here, and we'll make it a yeah. different color. You should, yeah, you can highlight it then, yeah. Can you see that color? Yes. So that, that bottom that we colored is our answer. And you oh. read it from the left-hand side here and go down like that. So tell me what the number is. So it's 13,038? Yeah. Oh, OK. So that's the that's multiplication. Nice. I know it looks much more complicated here, but yeah. it's not. It's If you actually do it on paper, it's much, much easier. But yes. the, this is just a way of me showing how, because I can't draw on the, <laughs> yeah, on the, the word, on the whiteboard thing. But can you see that? Yes, I yep. can. Can you. everybody see that? Any questions? Do you want me to do one more problem, or is everybody OK? Raise your hand if you would like me to do one more lattice multiplication problem. OK. Oh, somebody has hand up. Let's see who that is. So let's do 457 times 85. OK? So let's take that. All right, so let's see. DJ, tell me what numbers to put on this top row here. Four, five, and two. Yeah. And seven. Oh, yeah. Bad. Very good. Four. Five, and you said seven. And then what did you say down here? Yeah. Eight and five. Eight and five. So these two should be merged together. All right. And let's see if we can draw the lines. That will be this one. <clears throat> so first is just drawing the setup. This will be like that. Alrighty. Let's see what you got for me there. DJ, what should I write here? DJ, are you there? Um, okay. Five. Five. And here? Six. Six. Keep going. Um, and then three. Three. Mm -hmm. And then five. Yes. You are doing awesome. Keep going. And four. Four. And then zero. Zero. And then uh, two. 
and five. Nice. And then three and two. And then uh, two and zero. Two and zero. Very good. Now we just have to add. So this part here will just be this diagonal so, right here. Uh, 11. Uh, Wait. Uh, no, just like right here at the bottom. Oh, so that would be like 10? 10. 10. Oh, no, this, the blue, this is from the multiplication number, so the blue doesn't interfere in the adding. Just the white. So, oh, okay. so it will just be this. So which will be what? The bottom? There's only one number here, right? Which is five? Oh, I'm so confused. I know. So I'm going to color the bottom here red so that maybe you can see it. Can you see the red box that I just colored? Yeah. Yep. That is the only box below that line. Can you see that? Yeah. So that's the only number you want to add. So what will that be then? It will just be 5, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now you want to, so I'm going to color this red temporarily just so you can see which numbers to add. Do you see how those are the only numbers in the, the row, that diagonal that we're looking at? Can you see that? Yeah. All right, add up those numbers. What will you get? 14. 14. So you're going to have to write 1. Uh, I mean, 14 is 1, 4. So 4 will go here, but where will the 1 go? The 1 will be a carryover. So we're just going to write 1 here. We'll make it red. And let's put it where it belongs. Carry over here. Can you see where I put it? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah? So now go ahead and add that diagonal right here. Oh, when I, I have a question for everybody. When I move my mouse like that, what do you see? Do you see my mouse moving or not? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. All right. So five, zero, two, and one. Add them up. Tell me what you get. Eight. Eight. All right, do the next diagonal. Two, two, and four. Uh, eight. Eight. And three will remain. Three. Three. All right. So now read off your answer, which is this bottom part here. Uh, eight. 45. Uh, three. Uh, do you see the color sections here? Yeah, but it's hard to read because it's really small. Oh, okay, okay. We can make, we can fix that. Oh, that's much better. How's that? Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So all of this bottom shaded is your answer. What is it? Oh, okay. Starting with the three up here. Yeah. Yep, you got it. You totally got it. Is everybody okay with that? Any questions there on the lattice multiplication? No. Questions? No, no questions? Okay, so everybody's comfortable doing lattice multiplication. Now we can answer Jamie's question. So, Jamie, can you pose your question again? Yeah, um, the book just asked us what were some of the advantages and disadvantages of the lattice method. Okay. So, remember, in the normal multiplication, you have to play placeholder zeros, carry over, you do stuff in your head. Whereas here, everything got their own place, and you didn't have to worry about whether it's a tens place or zero, how many zeros to put. Can you see that? So the advantage is you it's very straightforward because all of the digits have their own placeholders. Like, for example, when you do 8 times 4, it's really 8 times 400. In the traditional method, you would have to put two zeros. 
Whereas because it's going in, I'm going to color it red just so I can talk about what the advantages are. See how they got their own place values in the hundreds column. Can you see that? So that means what? The 3 is going to be in the 100 columns, and the 2 is in the tens column, and so on. So they all got their individual places. So the advantage is that we don't have to worry about putting zeros. A lot of students get confused where to put the zeros, and if they mess up something, the whole problem is wrong. It's very unlikely somebody is going to mess up something like this because it's much smaller single digit numbers they're adding. Can you see that? What are so the I guess that, So I guess that on the flip side of that coin, a con would be that it doesn't really reinforce that whole idea of place value. Perfect. So it's more like uh like somebody just gave you steps. There is the depth of understanding is not going to be there. Like why is the answer 38,845? That depth of understanding is not there. The best method in which the depth of understanding will come about is the partial product method. There, the depth is much clearer. Even the standard algorithm is no good because you can just memorize the procedure and do the problem, and you have to artificially put placeholders. Whereas, when you do partial product method, each quantity get its own line, and you never have to worry about where the placeholder is because it's automatically there. So the partial product method is probably most important initially to get the depth of understanding, then the standard multiplication or lattice method. That's just personal preferences. But studies have shown that lattice method is much easier for students, and they don't panic. Because you're only working with single digits one at a time without having to worry about zeros and stuff. Does that help you answer your question? Yeah. All right. OK, any other questions in 4.6? Or 4.5, for that matter? Hmm? Can we do 5B? All right. Let's see, 5B. Let me go look at it. OK, use partial product method to calculate 8 times 24, and then draw an array. You may wish to use graph paper. OK, so 24. Do you remember how when we were doing the, so the array method? So let's go here, insert, table. So we need 24 columns and 8 rows. I'm just making it smaller so we can see it here. Can you see that? So how do I know what 8 times 24 is? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then go this way. Let's color it. Can you see that color? How many do we have? Three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, do you see this picture here? Who asked that question? Yeah, I see it. OK, so tell me what you see here. Can you tell me what you see? So horizontally, there are eight rows, right? Mm -hmm. And we have 10, 20, 24. So tell me this uh, blue plus the orange color here, what does that represent? Can you tell me what it represents? 20 times 8. Good for you. So let's write that there, 20 times 8. Which will be what? How many boxes do you see there? 
160. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Yep. And let's All right. Tell me what you will see in the white boxes. Four times eight. Yep. Four times eight. Which is how much? You can count the white boxes. How much is that? Anyone? 32. 32. I'm going to make it just a little crooked here so it fits in here. All right. So 24 times 8 equals. We're going to say 20 plus 4 times 8, which would equal 20 times 8. What property is this displaying? Anybody who can notice the property? What do you think? Property. Good for you. So don't just say distributive property, but you will say the whole thing. Distributive property of multiplication over addition, right? And what's the final answer then? Anyone? What's the final answer? Yeah, did you say 192? Mm -hmm. All right. So who asked that question? I did. Oh, OK. And who's the I? Autumn. Autumn. I don't understand that... it now. I just didn't know how to do the like twenties. Like I didn't know I could oh, right. do that. Right, right. But Two... now I understand it. And so you don't necessarily have to draw ten, but you can draw like a like a bigger rectangle saying that it's ten, twenty, and then four singletons. Yeah. Right? So I get it now. so for example, if this was a question on an exam, uh like your exam is a take home exam, you are allowed to use Word, by the way. So you can draw it on Word and just print it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We'll talk about the exam next week, Tuesday, because you'll get it on Tuesday, you'll turn it in on Thursday. And something like this could be on there, and then you just draw. It's much easier to draw on Word. This particular one is much easier to draw on Word than by hand, right? Do you know what I mean? Like, it will save you time. So that was a good question, Autumn. Anybody else have questions in that section, 4.6? Anything at all? This isn't technically in 4.6, but okay. you, did mention, uh, you did mention the Russian peasant method. Yes. And did you find it? Yeah. Ah. Pretty like, it? I was kind of surprised it actually worked. <laughs> yeah. So could you show people what it is like to use Russian peasant method? Sure. All right. So okay. let's see. Uh, is it easier for you to use a word or is it easier for you? Could you do the whiteboard? Which one you will prefer? Um, I can try using the whiteboard. Whiteboard. OK. So I'm going to make you a presenter. Actually, you might be able to share your whiteboard right now. Can you try it? There's a. So there's a small rectangle with an arrow coming out. Click on that. Mm -hmm. And then there should be share blank whiteboard. I don't okay. have that yet. All right, here. How about now? Do you see a whiteboard now? Yeah. All right, go ahead and use the pencil or the text box, whichever you prefer. Use the pencil because you can then write it like a pen. Sure. All right. So pick an example and do Russian peasant method. Yeah, can everybody see it? <laughs> uh, not yet. Did you write something? Uh, now I am. OK, I see the 2, 4, 24 times 16. 16. That's what I did. <laughs> OK, all right, 20, we see, I see 24 times 16. Everybody else see that? Is there anybody sure. who does not see that? All right, good, good. Keep going then. How do I do that? So, so then what you do is you have one column where you're halving everything. Yes. 
And then you have one column where you're doubling everything. So I'll just write times two. Okay. That's kind of the uh huh. And so then start with 24. So actually, hold on just 10 seconds. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. <laughs> All right, keep so going. Then, so first, you half everything until you get down to one. So 24 divided by 2 is 12. Mm -hmm. And then 12 divided by 2 is 6. Mm -hmm. And then 6 divided by 2 is 3. And then 3 divided by 2 is technically 1 and a half. Yep. But you just, you just disregard the remainder. Okay. And then what they had me do was then you double everything on this side. Okay. And then 6 times 2 is 32. And then it's 32 times 2 is 64. And then 128. You're doing really good using this board. Thanks. And then that's 256. Okay. And so then what you do is you cross out all the even numbers. Even numbers okay. from both sides or even numbers on one of the sides? When I did it, it showed me on both. It just showed me like both of the sides, but I think it's just these sides, this side. Okay. Because you just add what's left over together. Uh, well, if you want, so that means you're only crossing out the even numbers from the half where you have. All the halves go away. It had me cross out everything. No, no, I mean, double. yes, you cross I'm out across, double. but I'm saying you have to look for a, if you cross out the entire row, if on the left hand side you have an even number. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Keep going. So I have to do that. Uh -huh. And then and what's then, the answer there then? Then it just had me add the leftover. Okay. And then. So I go got, ahead and add them. Yeah. So we'll go 128. 256. And then I got 384. And then I put it in a calculator and it was right. <laughs> Aha! That is awesome. So why don't you write here Russian peasant method? Okay, let's we'll add text. Did everybody see what she did? Okay. So now the question is, could you use this method to draw? So can you, Jamie, since you're so good at writing, I'm going to have you write another one. Write down 37 <laughs> times 53. 37 times 53. Okay. All right, everybody, including Jamie, will do 37 times 53 using the Russian peasant method. I'll pause. See which answer you get. And then, Jamie, I'm going to have you do it here because you did really good. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, go ahead, everybody. We'll do this as an attendance quiz. And then when you're done, raise your hand so I know you're done. And then you will just hold it up so I can see. And then Jamie will write it on the board here. Yeah. All right. Wait, what method are we doing it in again? Russian peasant method, the one that she just showed on the screen here. So you write one number on the left, one number on the right. You start chopping the left number in half. You take the right number and you double it. Then you cross out all the numbers on the left-hand side that have even number. You cross out that whole row. And then whatever is left on the right-hand column, you add those and that's your answer. So go ahead and start doing that. DJ, are you okay with that? Yeah, I okay. didn't catch the... What's that? I didn't catch the numbers. Oh, 30... Oh, do you you not see it on the screen here? 37 times 53. Yeah, I was just listening. I wasn't, like, looking. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Sorry, 37 times 53. Thank you. Okay.
When you're so finished, so again, which number do I put the cross out again? You so once you do half and double and you get a one on the left hand column. So see how it's 24, 12, 6, do you see that? Yeah. On the left hand side, any number that's even, those are the ones you cross off all the way across. But but with 37, none of them are gonna be even. Yeah, none of them are even. I oh no, they so 37, half of 37 would be what? 18.5. Yeah, but you only write 18, not 18.5. Oh, why? Because that's the method. The method is you only take the integer part. Yeah, mm -hmm. you get rid of the remainder. For There's no reason, remainder, you... yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So you will have even numbers. When you are finished, please raise your hand so I know you are done. That way we can check the answer. Okay. Anybody else done? Yep. I'm confused. All right, Nicole, so we will have you do it on the board here. Great. Well, though, just we can, then we can see where you're getting stuck, you know what I mean? I am also confused. All right, you are also confused. So you and Nicole together will do this. All right. So, Nicole, do you want to take over the board? So. All right. Sure. So thirty-seven. Wow, Jamie, you were really good at this. This is not easy. <laughs> <laughs> this is really hard. All right. So she said, oh, "Take." I've been on the computer eight hours a day lately. <laughs> <laughs> Half and double. So you're going to start with 37 and 53. It doesn't matter which number you put where. All right, Nicole, it's all yours. I'm giving you grid here. And Drew, help her. All right, tell, what, uh, tell us what to write. So who's taking control of the board, Drew or Nicole? Nicole, don't you have control? Can I take control? Yeah, you, oh, any can. one of you can, yes. All right, who's, yeah, so, who's writing oh, here? I, oh, hi, Autumn. Is, oh. Are you done? That is a good-looking eight. Yep, yes, it is. All right, keep going. So do the left-hand column first. Oh, do the whole thing first. It helps if you do one column at a time. Okay, but oh, wait, what's going on? I'm not trying to draw this. Oh, darn it. <laughs> How do you get rid of this thing? Uh, no, don't get rid of it. Just leave it because uh, it will erase everything. Okay. Okay. You can use so, the text box, you know. Nine. Oh, we both drew nine. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you told me to draw it. Uh, Nicole, okay, let Nicole you draw. Okay, Nicole you got, got it. it. You 
can draw. Okay, go ahead, Nicole. Everybody. Oh, no. Yeah. Nine. Nicole? Okay. And then, what? Keep going. Okay. Then a four. Right. Okay, oh, that's a good looking four. It's a good four. And then you, and then a one. Okay. Okay. Yes. Then two twelve. Yes, we're on the same page. All right, keep going. Four twenty four. Mm hmm. Then eight forty eight. I feel like we should be using it. <laughs> It'll be fun. 848. Okay. There we go. And then and what? 1696. I don't know why I'm telling you this. You already know. 16. That's a good. 9. Six. Nine. Six. Four. Yep. Sorry. We got it. This is okay. <laughs> So now look on the left-hand column, and all the even numbers cross the entire row out. That's what Jamie said. Oh. Uh, so go ahead, do that. So the 4 and the 18 and the 2. Yep. So yep. cross those out all the way across. Ah. Okay. <laughs> I did not try to do that. Okay, look. Do you see the little square shape here? Um. Right yeah. next to the pencil, click on the square shape and hold it down, and there should be a line there. Line oh, two. I see line. Yeah. yeah, use I that line. It. There. Beautiful. Wait, okay. Yep, you got it. Whoever did that. Yeah, okay. So now write down all the numbers you have to add together from the double column. Yeah, so whatever it is. Press up on the double side is what you add. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> so who's writing that? I can't. Really. All right, there. Jamie, go ahead and write it because you seem to have the fastest writing skill. How the heck are you doing that? <laughs> like it's really she hard. Has touch, she has a touch screen. Oh, are you doing touch screen? No, I have an Apple mouse. <laughs> what and the heck? <laughs> But you even the Apple that mouse, mouse, that mouse, it's very hard to use a mouse. Okay. Look at that. <laughs> that that's pretty awesome. Okay, keep going. And then when I added it all up, I got one, nine, six, one, two, three, okay. oh, that's the answer. That's oh, the okay. answer. Yep. That's Can... not so hard. Okay. Everybody see how to do <laughs> Russian peasant method? Any yeah. questions I there? Wish, I actually kind of wish they had taught us this in school because like, yeah. when I was first doing the multiplication, I had the most typical time uh -huh. trying to do it. And this makes it kind of easier to start off with. Right. You know? Yes. Yes, it does. So you know, of course, what my next question is going to be. What do you think my next question is? Why does it work? There you go. <laughs> so, so start thinking about why the heck does that work? That's your next question, and I will, I will tell you this. You can talk to each other before Tuesday, but after Tuesday, you cannot ask anybody. So I want this to be a class collaboration. I will give you extra credit points towards your exam. If you figure out why it works mathematically, why should we believe that this works? So the whole class together is one group. You understand? Drew, do you want to start a Google Doc? <laughs> yeah. And then you will all contribute to it, and I will put an extra credit question on the exam that I will add those points directly to your exam score if you can explain to me very well why this method works. The answer will be very surprising to you. But everybody else. Like Say again? Is it an answer that's very kind of like duh, or is it something no, no, you kind no. of got to dig for? No, no, it's not a duh. It's it's definitely more involved. And then like okay. what? So your job is like, why the heck do we cancel out all the even ones, and why 
adding all the remaining ones gives you the answer, right? Because that's not so easy to see why the heck it works. No, it's no. like witchcraft. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is like witchcraft. So your job is to figure out mathematically why does it work and what is the reason for why the even numbered ones are crossed out. Okay? Everybody understand what the extra credit question is? Why the Russian peasant method works. Yes. Yep. You got it. All right. So whoever, who was the person who asked that question, you should thank them. That was Jamie, I think. You should thank her because you just got an extra great question out of it. <laughs> All right. Well, any other questions? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions on all of chapter four or three? Because on Tuesday and today we'll start chapter five. But my question to you is, does anybody have questions on chapter four? The exam questions, I've already made the exam for take home. And you will have questions that you have not seen before, but they are similar to homework. There's not any surprises on there. So if you did your homework, you should be good. Any questions at all? Do we have, um, wait, can you like give us like chapter three? problems to do? Oh, yeah, right. yes, yes. Yep, I can do that. I can do that. I'll email it to you later today. Okay. Okay, good one, good one. Yeah, because in four, I, you had questions to submit anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. like we had a specific homework. Problem. Yeah, yeah. I will, I will yeah. do that with three also, if you want to look at it ahead of time. Yes, please. Okay. All right, let's start with chapter five. Uh, who has questions on the reading guide for 5-1? Anybody? I do. Could we go over 4 and 5? 4 and 5. Okay, let's go open it. But what will you start out with? Will you start with three holes or would you start out with two-thirds? Two-thirds. And how many two-thirds will you pick? Three. Three. So you would start out with that picture. Okay. Can you see that? Yes. Do you see the difference? Somebody has a question. Hold on. Let's see who that is. All right, Nicole. Um, yeah. Where is this? Where is this reading guide? In Canvas. Um, because when I clicked the five point one, it said it was the four point six reading guide. Right. I know. I know. What uh, What Sahira noticed it's is just it's just the title is messed up. It should be five point one questions in there. If you scroll down, you should see these Hold questions. On, no. Do you see it? Otherwise, I'll email it to you. I'll upload it again. I'll upload it in Canvas again. How's that? Does that make sense? Nicole, are you still there? Yeah, sorry, I see it. I, okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll also, okay. I'll upload this one. That way the title will be correct also. Okay. Okay? All right, but do you see the difference? Two-thirds of three means take three holes and then just take two-thirds of it. Whereas three times two-thirds yeah. means take two-thirds three times, three separate times. Do you see the difference? Yes. And so algebraically, what's the difference? The first one was six-thirds. This is actually what? saying take two thirds three times and add them together. Do you see the difference? Yeah. Yeah. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Which will still give you what? Six thirds as your answer, right? Yeah. Yeah. which is two. Why is the answer two? Can someone tell me that? So, and actually, so actually the picture would look different. So let's actually draw this picture differently. Two thirds of three is, yes. So what I'm saying is, let's make that green. Orange is my answer. Two thirds of three, can you see? 
I'm taking yeah. two out of the three. Do you see the difference? Yes. Yes? Jamie, do you see that? Yep. Yep. Whereas the bottom one is two thirds, two thirds, two thirds, three times, and that's why it gives you six thirds or two. Can you see the difference? Okay, so now how are you going to say, give me half of three quarters? How would you do that? Versus three quarters, halves. Who can sh tell me how to draw that? It might be easier to draw it on the board here. So, can somebody keep this problem in your head so that when we stop sharing and go to the board, you can draw it? We're going to have Jamie draw it. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so whiteboard. Okay, there's, and actually here you can take the shape, the rectangle shape. Do you see that, Jamie? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. So first, Water. just write down what the problem is. Can somebody okay. tell her what the problem was? Can you write the problem above first? One What's... half times three fourths, right? Okay, yeah. Go ahead, write one half times three quarters on top. Okay, so how would you show us three, and also the same place where you got the rectangle, they also have a line tool Perfect. that you can use to divide your things. So first of all, how would you show three quarters? By putting that box in the four. Yep, so go ahead and do that. We'll pretend it's equal. Mm -hmm. Okay, and... There is no way to shade it, so just take your pencil and just like put some shading in it. Yeah, we'll that's good. Pencils. That will do. Three, oh yeah, we're doing a half. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know how to erase. No, no, don't erase there. I will erase everything. That's okay. Just put additional squiggles in there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just do more squiggles. Yeah. There you go. So that is three quarters. Now use a different color. Okay. Okay, and show me how what it would mean to say take half of this. Well, you would just. So draw the line tool again. Yes, yeah, so you would just put it in half. There you go. But see how you actually took the half all the way across? Um, right? So. Yeah, I definitely want it to go. To about like here. Right there, yeah. Go ahead, now shade the top part like you were going to with the squiggles. We'll just make X's. <laughs> okay, perfect. So half times three quarters is this picture. How much is that of the whole then? Can you see? Three out of what? And actually your whole line actually helps see what it is. What is it? Three out of what? Eight. Good. Go ahead, write it out. Perfect. Okay, now on the on the other side of it, write down three quarters times half. Alrighty, um, like over here. Yeah. No, no, not there. The on the right hand side. Oh, on the side. Okay. Uh huh. Three quarters times half. Okay, and draw similar picture again. So start out with half. Okay. And make a vertical line for half. Vertical. Oh. Nope, that's pretty good. <laughs> 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 okay, now I want and shade shade it, shade half of it. Okay, and I want three quarters of that. So now use a red color and lines yeah. and go all the way across four times or three times, I should say. One, two. Well, wouldn't we be splitting it in the four? Yeah, one more. Good, good. All right, now I want to take three quarters of it. So shade red, the amount you want. Perfect. Can everybody see how it's very different? Three quarters of a half versus half of three quarters. 
It's what you start out as very different. And the, what's the answer then still? Still three eighths. Three, st yeah, still three eighths. But does everybody understand why it's different? Can you see the difference? Also then, multiplication of fractions is not that hard if you understand what it means. Any questions right here? All right, we will continue with 5.1 for next class and 5.2. So 5.1, 5.2 is your homework for next class. Do the problems, upload them for 5.1 and 5.2. We'll discuss the problems next class, but just do the reading guides minimum. And I will send you questions for chapter three that you should look at. And then the exam, I will have you download it during class at the end of class on Tuesday. And you will work on it and turn it in on Thursday. Extra credit question, you can work on it on your own time as a whole class together. So Drew says he's going to do a Google Doc. Then you all have access to it. Right, Drew? Yes, I can do that. All right. Sounds good.